And um, after calling the meeting to order, item number two is the invocation and pledge of allegiance. I'd like to ask uh, my, my dear friend, Mr. Leon Miller, if he'd lead us in uh, a word of prayer and then followed by the pledge of allegiance. Thank you. Join me with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Item number three on today's agenda is the mayor's report. Um, we've had um, a busy couple of weeks. Um, Ms. Gaynor and I were uh, privileged to be at the groundbreaking at Tyndall Air Force Base recently uh, for the uh, DOT flyover uh, construction, which will ease the traffic situation uh, going from Mexico Beach to here and vice versa. It'll uh, allow the people on the base to not have to leave the base. They'll have to ride bicycles underneath and that kind of thing. So it's going to be really beautiful. It's going to be a great addition to uh, what they're now calling Tyndall. I think I spoke uh, before when I went to the last meeting out there that um, that's going to be the base of the future, uh, possibly housing uh, President Trump's um, idea of the Space Force and um, technological buildings that we cannot even yet imagine. So Tyndall's going to be a, a great um, continued part of this community. And I had the opportunity to tell uh, the Colonel when we were out there, um, spoke for just a moment, um, my small petite redhead grandmother back in the 40s actually drove one of the transport trucks for the men from Tyndall back and forth. And she also drove out to the old fuel depot here as well. So um, I feel you know very connected to Tyndall my father was also um, employed out there. So it's nice to see that that tradition is going to continue and that this is going to make our community remain the growing, vibrant area that it is uh, with, with the military partnerships that we have, not only with them, but with the Naval Coastal System Station as well. We had a wonderful Halloween celebration. I could not um, help but remember that uh, this time last year that our Halloween celebration, which took place just two short weeks after Hurricane Michael, um, uh, began the journey that Lynn Haven has made and being such a shining light in the community and welcoming everyone here uh, to safety and to fun. And uh, I remember Walmart giving us all those costumes and all that candy and how everybody pulled together. And the, the park uh, literally was a miraculous cleanup last year. And, and it was just um, this year to know that we're continuing that tradition. So once again, um, there's no, there are no words that I could, as mayor, adequately express um, the work that the employees of this city have done to make sure that the children and the families here have felt like this community has continued on a positive path. So thank you all so much for all that you do every day. Um, also, I had a, a weekend with grandchildren since the last meeting, so that was good. Um, made me a happier mayor. I've met with lots of residents and business owners regarding their uh, continued issues with contractors, um, with uh, some drainage issues and other concerns. But uh, most people uh, seem to be rather resolute. We're becoming, um, uh, Ms. Richard, I'll just have to say that Lynn Haven is becoming a bit British. We're getting that stiff upper lip, I think, that we've just become resolute that some of these things aren't going to change quickly. And so um, I'm just proud of all our residents. You know, I think endurance is probably the word of the month right now. People are just enduring whatever they have to and doing the best they can to keep going. And so the same kind of, you know, thankfulness and the same kind of um, congratulations to our residents just for continuing to persevere and to work through what they have to work through just to get through each day right now. So that's really all I have right now. Um, I'll just pass and um, go to the other end of the table and start with Commissioner Perno this week. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I attended the uh, Halloween celebration in the park and I'd like to thank everybody who worked it and put up with the drastic drop of temperature and the wind that night. It was, it was, it was amazing that we were in our t-shirts and sweating at two o'clock and it was freezing and windy at seven o'clock you know and everybody did a great job even even with the weather not not being 
too much in our favor. It was a windy, cold night, but the kids had fun and everything was, everything went well. So, um, I, um, attended, uh, uh, the ROTC promotion at Mosley high school. One of, one of my employees was being promoted to Sergeant and, uh, he's only 16 years old and I was really proud to be with his parents when he got promoted and he invited me to come. So it was an honor. And, uh, I also uh, met with a citizen at his home uh, to look at uh, uh, the situation he had with uh, his, uh, his, he, he says his neighbors are high on both sides and he's catching water and Bobby, Bobby Baker's going to meet me out there at his, his house tomorrow to hopefully work out solutions for the citizen. And uh, I just want to tell you, I'll continue to work hard and listen to everybody and do the best I can for, for being a commissioner for y'all. Thank you. Excellent. Commissioner Aldridge. Thank you, Mayor. Um, been a been a long three weeks. Feels like it's been a long time since we've had a meeting. Um, been a busy, productive couple of weeks. Um, of course, we're always holding meetings uh, behind the scenes, trying to make sure everything's flowing and, and that we're making uh, as, as much of an impact for the citizens as we can. Um, I will drop this little thing out there. I'm so excited about what's going to be going on in the uh, end of first, you know, second quarter of next year with Highway 77. Uh, I'm not going to go into it, but everybody's going to love that. So be excited for spring of next year. Um, and just know that every employee here, every commissioner and the mayor is working to try to make this place the premier place to live here in Bay County. So thank all of you for being involved as well. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Aldridge. And if I may clarify, when Commissioner Aldridge said that we're holding meetings behind the scenes, that the commission is not holding meetings behind the scenes. <laughs> yes, Mayor. No, that, we'll... <laughs> I think he meant he's meeting with staff and others yes, behind the scenes. Yes, that is what I mean. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along. Just a little humor to the meeting there. Moving right along to Commissioner Russell. Thank you, Mayor, for straightening that out, because if you weren't, I was going to. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's been a productive couple of weeks, um, mostly dealing with, uh, with citizens' issues. Um, had a meeting with the, the city attorney, city engineer, and as well the uh, acting city manager, and um, continue to work for you. Uh, if I can do anything for you, call me and let me know. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner Tender? Uh, thank you. Um, basically, the last few weeks, I've just been dealing with residents and uh, when I get an issue, I make a phone call and try to get it fixed as quickly as possible. Um, drainage issues, contractor issues, all the usual that just seems to be going on now. Um, been talking uh, with the acting city manager about customer service. Just happens to be a thing for me and I will never let it die, <laughs> no matter what's going on. Um, and uh, so we're now ha we now have popcorn in the permitting office. If anybody's hungry, um, nice. just anything to create a more pleasant atmosphere uh, when we're dealing with things that nobody likes to deal with. Um, other than that, I think uh, just the usual, just the usual stuff that I hear almost every day, and trying to take care of business. Thank you. Thank you. Um, item number five on tonight's agenda is the acting city manager's report. Ms. Gaynor. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to yield some of my time, or well, probably most of it, uh, to two important things. First is the employees of the month. And so you remember we told you that there were so many employees that lagged behind in terms of the things they did during and after the storm that we just couldn't choose one employee and say employee of the month. And this will probably be the last month that we catch up on those employee employees of the month. And so at this time, I'm going to ask first that Joe Footen comes and talks about um, his person. And then after Joe, uh, we will have uh, Ray Gates that will come up and talk about his person. Hi, I'm Joe Footen. I'm the facility maintenance director for the city of Lynn Haven. Uh, at this time, can I get Jason up here, please? It gives me great pleasure to present Jason Cobbs with this award. Jason was nominated and voted by my fellow city leaders for his excellent performance and effort and has put into his job. I always tell my employees that hard work and dedication noticed by peers is much more valuable than the kudos from your boss. Jason has been an asset to the city of Lynn for six years and has been with this department since he started and has become someone I really rely on. 
He is dependable and is a very good worker. Jason is well liked by his coworkers, which is indicative of being a team player, which I say thank you. Jason is a valuable product of our, uh, I'm sorry. Jason is a valuable part of our department. Jason, congratulations. Dave's not here. Dave O'Connell is the person that we nominated from the police department. Um, he's working. What? Okay. Um, is this correct? Did we get the right person? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, Dave is working midnights, so he's not able to be here. Uh, during during the storm, uh, immediately during and after, in between, Dave had to keep himself busy. Uh, he would dispatch from six in the morning, I mean six in the evening till six in the morning. He'd sleep in his truck for about an hour to two hours, grab a chainsaw and go out and cut limbs, uh, drive a tractor, do whatever he needed to do go back to his truck, sleep for another 30 minutes to an hour, dispatch at night again. He didn't have any relief. I went in there uh, a couple of times to relieve him and he wanted to stay put where he was and make sure that everything was done and what needed to be done was done. Um, he was relentless. He uh, went above and beyond whenever we needed to get something, do something. Dave was willing to jump in and do it. Uh, there wasn't there was times where I could tell he was tired. He needed to go home. I would tell him to go home. I would tell him to check on his wife. He sent his wife out of town, but he would not leave his troops. And from day one, we knew Dave was special. He just jumped in. He did what he had to do. He learned the equipment that we had, the CAD system that we had, and he just ran with it. To this day, if there's anything we ask Dave to do, he'll do it. He won't question why. He'll just do it for you. He's that type of person. He is a, a man of integrity, uh, wit, wisdom, and intelligence, and we are very fortunate to have him. So on behalf of Dave, I thank you for this award. Thank you. Mayor, a couple other things that we have, uh, just want the citizens to know about. We know that there have been some long lines that have happened uh, in terms of building the official build, building department. We are proud to say we have hired two permitting specialists that have experience and this hopefully will make the lines go by a little bit faster along with the popcorn and the coffee. Uh, they can probably wait and, and not even know they're waiting, we hope. Um, so that's a really good thing. Again, and we would like to thank everyone for Halloween. We thought this year, you know, because it was the storm last year, we wouldn't have that many people as we had last year. Several of staff said, I think it's more than what we had last year. It was very successful. I love hearing from residents and other folks who say, uh, we, we got to do this every year. This is the best thing that could have happened um, and should be happening to the city of Lynn Haven. Some bright spots. We do see the roofs going on the buildings. Uh, right now, we are very proud of our facility maintenance and community services department. They are making strides at the garden center. Uh, one of the great things that they're doing, they've already done some of the gutting out at the garden center, uh, began to make it uh, uh, something is going to look totally different by the time we're finished with it. But what's the great side of this is that we have staff that's bought into it and they're working this and some other projects themselves. This also saves the city money um, and we can also get reimbursed for the time that these employees spend rebuilding the city. So we just thank God for, for, for the cities and all the things that, um, 
they are doing. And I will tell you by the first of the year, you will see some pretty amazing things happen for this city. So with that, Mayor, that is my report. Thank you so much. And again, thank you for all the hard work that you're doing for the city and have done for the past months. Um, at this time, I would move on to item number six, um, the city attorney's report. As usual, Mayor, no report at this time. Thank you. Moving on to item number seven, this is public commentary. As we uh, move through each of the items, part of the format for the way I conduct a meeting is the public is allowed to comment on any of these items as we move along. But if you have something that you would like to talk about tonight to the commission that is not listed on, as one of the agenda items, um, feel free at this point to approach the podium and please try and keep your comments to around three minutes. Yes, ma'am. I think it's pointed the wrong way. <laughs> um, this is Arlene Harrison. Um, I would like to thank the city of Lynn Haven for a very quick response late on Friday afternoon when I had a very serious plumbing problem and uh, sewer problem with at Roberts Hall. And I want to commend the city with its response. Thank you. Thank you. That's wonderful to hear. Thank you so much. <laughs> Very nice. Is there anyone else who has an item for the commission this evening? Mr. Miller? Okay. And the other reason, so the other thing is, is that you know we get a lot of apartment complex on 17th Street right now. Think about it and see if we need to put a start, a flashing light there to say stop coming out of there because if not, there's going to be some terrible wreck that because we're talking about maybe 200 or 300 cars coming out of there. Maybe this will be an item for our traffic committee to consider, um, Chief Ramey, if we'll just have Chief Ramey and, and the committee get on that. Thank you so much for bringing that to our attention. Is there anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Gloria Cutchins, 1115 Kentucky Avenue. I'm puzzled about why both commission meetings each month are at times when people who are working can't attend. Um, I can answer partially for you and then maybe if the others want to chime in, they can. Um, when I became mayor four and a half years ago, um, I campaigned about an evening commission meeting because people asked me for that. They, they said that's what they wanted. And so even when I brought that forward, the commissioners who were in place at the time would not agree to do both commissioner commission meetings at six. And so we made a compromise and we had one meeting at four and one at six. Um, recently, um, this item was brought back up and this commission decided to keep one at four and move the other, the six o'clock meetings till nine. Um, I personally am, am still for the evening meetings, but that's where we are. So if anyone else on the commission would like to address that, feel free to do that. Thank you, Mayor, if I may. Um, Ms. Cutchin, it, it was my understanding, it, and I'm one of, the one, one of the ones that voted for it, um, we had a special meeting a couple of months ago, or about it was a 9 or 9.30 meeting, and the response that we got on Facebook, we had more people watching on Facebook and making comments on Facebook than we've ever had in the audience. And my, my understanding and the reason I voted for it was because we were getting more participation online. You know, I, I understand mm -hmm. there is a significance to have people here, yeah. but when you have 1,400 people watching it on Facebook and making comments on Facebook, you're getting the response that way. So my feeling was that people were at work being able to watch the meetings while they were at work and still be able to interact with us. Well, so, so that was, that was yeah. my thinking, the reason why I voted to, to move it. When I was working, I would not have been able to do that, but yes, maybe everybody can now. Yes, Anyone else? Yes, Mayor. If I could, I, you know, I just kind of piggyback, uh, you know, I, I get a lot of the same responses um, from, from working people uh, and, and that, they can't come to the meetings, but they do love the Facebook um, live stream and they, they do sit at work and watch these meetings. I know for a fact, I'm not going to name names, but family members, maybe sometimes uh, they'll watch these meetings. So, yes, I agree. I think it's a there's there's multiple ways to reach or get our message out, reach the public. And I, I'm open to any times. Really, I am. I'm here to work for you. But um, 
it all determines which one is getting the most effective outcome, I believe. Why not have the four o'clock meeting move to nine o'clock and have a still have mm -hmm. an evening meeting for people right. who want to come? Right. Yes, ma'am. That's yes, a good idea. And and Miss Cutchins, I would follow up with what I said before as well. Um, I'm still against anything other than evening meetings. I'd like to have them both at six o'clock. And to say that people at work can watch it on Facebook. I mean, you can watch it on Facebook at home at night. But my career before this was a teacher, I certainly couldn't have watched it on Facebook, even if I wanted to, because our computers would have been locked out of Facebook. Nurses can't do that. A policeman can't do that. I mean, unless you're working for yourself in a private audience, I don't know who would be able to do that or you're at home. Yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm, still, you know, I'm still looking for that all evening meetings is what this mayor would like to see. So just on the record for that. Anyone else? Ms. Yes, ma'am. Um, are we doing it on Facebook right now? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Where are they? <laughs> well, he's he's streaming it live on Facebook, oh, so the people oh, people at home just can... aren't asking questions. Exactly. Yet. Okay. Well, and and sometimes we have staff, our communications department. I think what Commissioner Tinder meant was that our communications department, Catherine, and some of the others yeah. are usually here responding mm -hmm. to the uh, comments that are made by Facebook. So, yeah. Um, any other uh, comments about anything today? Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm not really hearing um, what if if people are commenting right now on Facebook if they commented about other things we haven't heard any of it so I really also agree with the evening meetings thank you and and also when you leave here today if you're not you know, if you don't use Facebook a lot, if you ever want to leave a meeting and then go and pull Facebook back up our meeting and look at it on YouTube, you can watch it again and you can see what people had to say, you know, afterwards about uh, different items. So anyone else? Okay, if not, then I'll move on from public commentary to our consent agenda, which is, um, again, it's just our uh, minutes from the last regular meeting, which was October the 22nd. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. There's been a motion for approval and a second. Any discussion, corrections, deletions to that um, document? There appear to be none. Any comments from the public about last uh, month's meet meeting minutes? There appear to be none. Uh, Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldrich? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So the, the minutes stand approved. There is no old business to discuss tonight. Moving on to new business, item number nine. This is discussion and possible approval to advertise an RFQ soliciting fencing for the cemeteries and other city property, properties, and this is an item placed by the acting city manager. Mayor, as we move into the rebuild, uh, we know, we anticipate that there are going to be some things that we need to put in place, one of them being the Mount Hope Cemetery that, that does not have fencing around it. Now that we kind of got a cost analysis from FEMA where we can, we know where, where we may, may land in that, we can put that RFP uh, out uh, to get some pricing to see what it cost us to put uh, some fencing back in place, repair some other fencing. And then if the f in the future, if we'd like some other fencing to be put in place, we'll be able to do that. So really a lot of these things is once we've gone through the FEMA uh, cost analysis and we, we talked about it, to be able to put those RFQs out so that we're not waiting around and the city can continue just to move forward with these kinds of projects. So I heard both at both RFQ and RFP. Will this be an RFQ or an RFP? It, it will be uh, pricing, so it okay. really will be an RFP. Okay, thank you very much. Just to make that correction, yes, everybody on the on the agenda there. Um, is there a discussion concerning this? No, I make the motion that we go ahead and do it. So there is a motion on the floor to um, advertise for an RFP for fencing for the cemeteries and other city properties. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any from the public? Ms. Gaynor, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So it stands approved. Um, item number 10 is discussion and possible approval of resolution number 2019-11-305, addressing legal representation for the city regarding the open crisis. Um, city attorney may have some comments. To, um, do we need to read this resolution in entirety or just by title? Or 
if the commission wishes to go forward, then it would be in read by title only, but only at the okay. point the decision um, okay. makes a decision. Okay. So would you like to bring some yes. information for us? Thank you, Mayor. As the mayor said, this is a resolution which proposes engaging or retaining a law firm, Riley and Jackson, to seek civil remedies against uh, those responsible for wrongful distribution of prescription opiates. In short, there is, and Jeremiah Mosley with that firm is here, uh, and should we have any more specific questions, I'd ask the mayor to allow him to uh, speak to that. But in short, there's a class action lawsuit which has a number of county and city municipalities um, in the thousands. The thought is that those who are participating in this litigation will, well, let me back up. The thought is that eventually there is more than likely going to be a settlement with these distributors, uh, makers and distributors of these opioids. In those counties and municipalities that have counsel and are at the table in this mass class action suit, will have a bigger say in getting the funding that will likely be coming. Um, for those cities and counties that do not have anyone at the table, there is a good chance that um, their voice will not be heard and the compensation will not be as great. In this case, it's my understanding that Bay County has representation and is a, has a seat at the table. And if the city, uh, as I understand it, were to do nothing, then Bay, and we would be left to Bay County's decision as to what and how much funding we would uh, deserve. The hope, if you were to retain counsel, is that we would have a bigger say and swing a bigger stick when it came time to that resolution point. With that being said, Mayor, if um, you would allow, I would ask that Mr. Mosley be able to give an opportunity uh, to speak on behalf of his firm, Riley and Jackson. Absolutely, Mr. Mosley. <laughs> Commissioners, uh, Jeremiah Mosley from the Riley and Jackson Law Firm at 3530 Independence Boulevard in Birmingham. Uh, like Adam said, this is a, a litigation that affects the entire country. There's about 30,000 uh, local governments, counties, and municipalities in the country, about close to 3,000 have now filed a lawsuit in a collected litigation in Cleveland, Ohio, which is one of the hardest hit areas by the opioid crisis. But even though Cleveland and Cuyahoga County are among the hardest hit, every, every community is hit by this. Um, I can get as far into the weeds on the actual litigation as anyone wants to. I will tell you practically the issue right now is the litigation has been going on for about three years. And it's getting to a point now where it looks very likely that in the next 6, 12, possibly 18 months, there's going to be a, a global settlement that affects the entire country. Um, like, like Mr. Albritton said, those counties and cities that have filed a lawsuit into the litigation in Cleveland are going to have a bigger say in how the money gets divided up. There's almost certainly going to be some money that's allocated for specifically for Lynn Haven. And the question is, who gets the money? Um, the big push for lawyers like myself and my law firm and some of the firms we're associated with is to prevent what happened in the late 90s with the tobacco settlement, where $200 billion over 25 years went to, to plug up general funds and, and budget holes. We don't want that to happen here because unlike tobacco, which is a long-term health risk, this is a very acute health risk uh, in, in the communities. It's now being estimated that there are more deaths per day by opioid overdoses than by car accidents, which is the first time in decades that car accidents have not been the leading cause of death. We, we believe that there are very legitimate uses for these medications. We have uncovered a lot of evidence over the past three years of some companies that have done what I would call very bad things in trying to increase their bottom lines and their profit margins by pushing these medications for uses they're not intended for. That's in sum what we would ask. Um, we, I'll tell you very briefly about my firm. We practice, in we're, we practice nationwide in this litigation. We practice in Alabama and in the Panhandle. We represent Jefferson County, which is where Birmingham is located, the largest county in Alabama, Huntsville, some other counties and cities in Alabama, uh, uh, Okaloosa and Walton counties to your west. We represent those counties. And like Mr. Albritton said, there's a, there's a large firm that represents Bay County, and they also represent some other counties in, in the state of Florida in the negotiations with the attorney general and the county, we would rec recommend that y'all have someone who's in the litigation, who knows the litigation, who can go and say, no, Lynn Haven's allocation needs to come to Lynn Haven, not to Bay County, not to um, Tallahassee, not to another state because there's only so much money to go around. Thank you, Mr. Mosley. Yes, ma'am. 
and Mayor, just to close that out, um, <clears throat> after speaking with um, the um, partners at Riley and Jackson, Mr. Mosley included, uh, and the city manager, and, confer uh, and us conferring over the litigation, I believe it's safe to say that both the city manager and I both recommend um, moving forward with this resolution. Mayor, could I ask yes, a question? Mayor. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you explained it. I know we have, we have talked in the past, but for for the sake of the um, citizens and the rest of the board, how do, how does the payment? How would you take payment for this? So particular? what we operate, what we propose, Commissioner Aldridge, is operating mm -hmm. under a contingency fee, which means the hours we put in to this, we don't never send y'all a bill. If for some reason there was no recovery down the road, we never send you a bill. Um, if we do recover, we propose a contingency fee of 30%. Our thought is most contingency fee contracts are for a third or 40%. We come in lower with the goal of putting more money in this, back into the city um, than, than maybe another law firm might, and that's that's our proposal. Thank you. Yes, sir. Are there other questions or comments from the commission? Mr. Mosley, um, there there's also a potential for another 8 to 10% uh, being taken by the courts, correct? Uh to for the cost of the litigation there is a so things are happening very quickly right now what commissioner russell is referring to is there's a potential that a certain percentage of any proposed settlement with any of these large manufacturers would go into a fund that's set aside specifically for reimbursing attorneys fees for cities and counties that hired outside counsel if that does come to pass commissioner we are telling all of our clients that we will proactively appeal to that fund to try to get some portion or the entire portion of your attorney's fees back to you. So let's just say, and I'm not going to say a number, but if the city gets allocated a certain number of tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars for this, we take our fee. We would then go petition that fund to say, can they please get their fee back because they need this money back on the ground. Are there other comments or questions from the commission? Um, I, I did make one small one. I promised I wouldn't um, do any standing or grandstanding, uh, but I was in on the meeting um, that took place, and um, I am not in concurrent um, concurrence with our entering into this type of a lawsuit. And I'll just I'll make it under 30 seconds with all due respect um, to Mr. Mosley and to Mr. Albritton. Um, and, and my own daughter is an attorney, so I'm not slamming attorneys. But this all boils down to a lawsuit being made by attorneys all over the United States, and it's going to be a great deal of money. And when it, when it really comes to it, are the pharmaceutical companies really responsible for the actions taken by individuals? And I think we can continue to sue um, our pharmaceutical companies to the point that, you know, some of them have been bad actors, and some of the doctors have been bad actors, and some of the companies have been bad actors, the drug representatives, et cetera. But we're going to get to the point that normal people, when they go to the hospital and have a surgery, can't get the pain medications they need. And what it really boils down to is when they take you in for surgery, and they kick you out and do an outpatient surgery that really should have been an in-house surgery and they make you responsible for giving yourself pain medication, that's really when people get addicted, when they don't know how much to take. If you're in a doctor's care in a hospital and you're being given proper amounts, it's not that easy to get addicted. So if you're going to sue the pharmaceuticals, you're going to sue the insurance companies too for kicking people out of hospitals. Then we're going to come after our doctors. And it's getting to the point now that doctors are afraid to prescribe those medications to people that they need because they're afraid to being sued. So I just wanted to go on record that I'm a against us taking this money. I'm against us entering this lawsuit, and that's all I have to say about it. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Hey, Mayor, if I may. Um, I've, I've met with Mr. Mosley and, and his um, associates, um, and I, I gave him pretty much the same scenario that you just said. Um, I, I, I'm taking a very libertarian point of view that um, if you're foolish enough to, to get hooked on drugs, then you need to be responsible for your own actions. Um, so personally, I completely agree with, your, with, with, with what you're saying. Uh, as a commissioner, though, I, I feel it's my duty that if there's money for the city to get through a lawsuit, it's my duty to make sure the citizens get what they deserve. And if, they, you know, if there's money out there for the city to be had, I would rather it come to Lynn Haven than go to Bay County or go to Florida. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else have a comment? Anyone from the public? Yes, sir. Brad Young, 210 Lakeview Terrace. I am opposed to this representation agreement. I do not like the taking of the 30% right off the top and then taking the legal fees from the por portion assigned to Lynn Haven. I don't think that's right. This is a honeypot 
lawsuit. It is going to be very, very lucrative for the lawyers involved. There's no doubt about it. I want to say Oklahoma got $580 million. We're talking large sums of money here. This is a honeypot. If we think there's some money for us, I would prefer to pay the legal fees directly and then take 100% of the comp. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Doesn't appear there is. Um, any other discussion? No, ma'am. At this time, is there a motion um, to um, approve this resolution or any other comments from the um, commission? Mayor, I'm, I'm going to make a motion just so we can move forward to this one way or the other. I'll second. So there's been a motion to move uh, forward and a second. Um, would we read the resolution at this time or after there's a vote, sir? I would suggest taking the vote. If there's sufficient votes, then we'll read the resolution. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? No. Mayor Anderson? No. So the uh, resolution would pass um, with a uh, three vote majority. At this time, we would read the resolution. Please, Ms. Gaynor, thank you. Resolution number 2019-11-305, a resolution of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida concerning opioid litigation, authorizing, engaging, and retaining counsel to seek remedies against those responsible for wrongful distribution of prescription opiates and providing for an effective date. Thank you. So that concludes what we need to say about it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yes, um, I would like uh, to move back just for a moment to our acting city manager's report, which was item number five. Thank you, Mr. Mosley, for coming today, by the way. I appreciate Thank your you. time. Um, item number five, um, B, department update. Um, I think I either moved forward too quickly or we overlooked it. Uh, Ms. Gaynor was not able to give that report, so I'm going to back up just a moment before I move forward with item number 11. I apologize. If, I, if, if Kelly Battistini will come forward, as you know, I've implemented each month that we do a department update so that you and the citizens know what's happening and what we're doing. And this month, it is Kelly Battistini with HR. Hi, good evening. Um, the Human Resources Department, along with key members of our fire department, went through an extensive um, ADA training. Uh, we went uh, over to the fire department. We had an instructor come. We also did a lot of online training. It was several weeks long. Um, the city manager had wanted us to do this for a while. It came to light because Chief Ramey needed an ADA coordinator in order to become um, Accredited. Accredited, thank you. And so uh, we started this, uh, and then we came back. I came back the first day and started to share with um, the city manager all the things that we were learning. Um, she decided we wanted to go into it a little deeper. Um, she felt like it's just important that we remove the social barriers for our citizens so they can enjoy all the things the city offers um, equally with everyone else. Um, technology, we are now um, almost completely digital. We don't have no more paper files. Um, so any kind of um, interaction between departments is all um, electronic. Uh, we're working on getting our work our workflow process electronic. So for instance, um, if Bobby, the public works director, wants to promote somebody to a driver, he can do it electronically and it'll route through a workflow system for approvals. And then the, and it's done automatically, updated for salary, updated for position in the computer, everything, you know, it's just all automatic. So we're working with that with Graham, the IT manager. Um, also, we have an um, electronic applicant tracking system. Um, it used to be called HireRail, now it's Caldare. Um, it posts over 50,000 job boards um, and I think almost 100 military job boards as well. Um, just one example, we posted the customer service position and we had 266 yes. applications in four days. Wow. So as we're comparing, I, I did some, made some phone calls to other municipalities around our area. Uh, one of them has 99 vacancies. One has 36 and have only, has only filled one in the last um, month. Um, another one has 28. So I think we're doing pretty good with our seven vacancies that we have. Um, we have candidates for almost all of them. And I think it's the first time in three years that our uh, police department, school crossing guard positions have been fully staffed. So 
and, then, and our police department with the officers. So that's exciting. Um, I think another reason that we're having so much success with the candidates is because of the benefit package that you all have voted to, for us to be able to offer to our employees. And um, I think that also has a lot to do with the retention and the morale of our employees. Vicki and I have come up with some um, morale boosting ideas. Um, we're really excited about, we've implemented some and uh, we've got some things up our sleeves. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Um, and uh, we're working on a wellness program. We actually had a flu shot clinic last month for our employees. And in the spring, we are going to hopefully maybe February-ish, um, we are gonna try to put together a health fair, not only for our employees, but also for all the citizens to come. Um, and I don't know if you recall the one the News Herald used to put on years ago, but that was uh, a lot of it, Vicki's input there. And we're gonna partner together with communications and see if we can do something on that scale. Um, you know, for our employees and the citizens. And um, we've also hired an HR assistant and uh, she has been instrumental in helping um, all the department heads in this building. Um, she has gone over to the permitting and helped with them uh, come up with new ideas and how to cut down some of the work. Vicki and I partnered with Mike Gordon um, and we came up with some ideas in the permitting process to cut down the time um, and so there's some exciting things that are going to be happening there as well. So thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Any any questions from the commission? I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Apologize for overlooking that. It's a great report. Thank you very much. Um, moving on to item number 11 on this evening's agenda. This is the discussion and approval of 55 Hurricane Michael Relief Fund grant recipients. For those of you who may not be familiar, this is the Hurricane Relief Trust, uh, Trust Fund. It is a 501c3 fund that was established right after um, Hurricane Michael to aid citizens in Lynn Haven. At this point in time, I'm happy to report to you that we have collected in just over a year um, over $225,000 into this fund and we've been able to give it out in $1,000 grants to citizens here in Lynn Haven who need help with rebuilding and other costs after the storm. Um, we have um, an additional grant that was given to us October 10th by Florida Blue in the amount of $50,000. So our promise has been that as the money comes in, we immediately send it back out to those people who need it. And we have um, active applications. We intend to fill every application. I, I, don't usually talk about faith in public meetings, but I have faith that we will receive all the funds and that we will eventually be able to fill every application that has come in. And um, it, this commission is also the board of trustees for this Hurricane Relief Grant Trust Fund. And in the future, when we get past the rebuilding stage, the way this trust fund is written, it can also be used to aid us in rebuilding. If we wanted to build a fine arts center or a gymnasium or different things with, for the city, we'll be able to convert that trust fund for those types of things in the future. So right now we're still in rebuilding. So um, without further ado, I would just say that every commissioner has a list of the addresses which were approved. We have a committee that works uh, within the city staff to make sure that the applications are approved as much as possible in the order of need. Those people with the most children, the most damage, the most need in their families. And so um, I would be asking for a, a motion and a second if possible this evening to approve these 55 applications and we will be um, giving this money out um, right away to these people so that they can um, use them in whatever way they see fit. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. There is a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion from the board or questions? Any from the public? Uh, Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Perno? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldrich? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And I would like to say one more time, thank you, Florida Blue, for their generosity for this um, amount of money, and also that they will be in Lynn Haven in uh, about a week and a half in the um, Walmart Shopping Center with all kinds of information and um, items to give to the citizens here in Lynn Haven to help with health and mental Ill mental health um, issues that people are undergoing. So moving on to number twelve, this is the discussion and possible action regarding approval of a development order. 
um, Development Order 19-5 for the Lynn Haven Storage Park on Highway 389. Miss um, Russell, did you have a report for us on that? Since it's quasi-judicial, I'll need to swear in anybody providing testimony. So if you are providing testimony related to this topic, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. And I would also ask the commission for disclosure of any ex parte communication. Mayor's had none. None. I've had none. I've had none. None. Thank you. This is a request for a development order approval to construct a storage park consisting of 28,750 square feet of mini storage units and 54,000 square feet of climate controlled storage with supporting parking, stormwater management and infrastructure on Highway 389. The land consists of three parcels, two of which are commercial and the third one is low density residential and that will be the site of the stormwater ponds and actually provides kind of a buffer between that development and the housing which is behind. Uh, the property is currently vacant being adjacent on the south side of the New Dollar General Store which is located on the corner of Highway 390 and Highway 389. The impervious surface area on the site will be 77% which is below the allowable maximum of 85%. The applicant, uh, the application has been reviewed and has been found to comply with the City of Lynn Haven Unified Land Development Code along with state requirements. This item went before the Lynn Haven Planning Commission on November the 5th, who recommended approval unanimously. At the, um, I would like to say that representation for the developer, the owner, is here tonight, Jim Slanina, if you had any questions of him, and also the reviewing engineer from Dewberry, Chris Shaw, is also here. He's the one who reviewed it to make sure that it complied with all the storm water regulations. At the planning board meeting, there was one request that um, we had noted in the minutes and that I'm going to bring to your attention. We allow four foot fencing in front of a building and from the the building back so the sides and the rear we allow eight foot fencing we allow eight foot all the way around in industrial but not normally in commercial they are planning to put raw iron fencing that fancy raw iron fencing um, on the front of this property and they have requested that they be allowed to have six foot rather than the four foot. So I'm bringing that to you um, so that you can make a decision on that. Do you have questions or discussion? Mayor, if I may? Yes. Um, am I reading this correctly that uh, Neil Jones is the owner? So Neil Jones at time of application was the owner, but while we were in review, it was sold to the developer. So he was the owner of the property, but the developer um, the people who are actually developing it have, since he submitted this, have actually become the owners and we have an amended development order application packet from them. But at the time of me bringing it to you, which was prior to the planning commission, uh, because you have to have things early, it was still under Neil Jones in the record. Did it go to the planning commission? as still belonging to Neil Jones? No, we had that well, we had that discussion because Neil Jones is on the planning board right. and if he were still the owner, he would not have been able to take part, um, but he was no longer the owner. Okay, yes. uh, thank you. Thank you. Any other mm -hmm. questions or comments? Yes, Mayor. Go ahead. So who is the owner? The owner is Matthew Brandon um, and he, he is um, the, the company that are actually developing it. I'd have to pull it out of the file to remember the name of the actual company, but he's the, the owner of the company. Jim Salina can probably give you more information on him. No, that's fine. Thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Yes, ma'am, if I may. Um, just a simple one for either one of you. Why the six-foot fence? Is it, is it just the decor, the look that we're going for, or is there another reason for it? She's done a great job. Yes, she has. Um, it's the security. Okay. This is a um, upscale, mm -hmm. high quality, um, both climate controlled and non climate controlled. Okay. These um, gentlemen, both Matt and Russ here, um, they operate another one in Panama City Beach. And so to protect, um, provide security for this high tech, a portion of the 388 frontage needs to have a fence. Mm -hmm. The rest of it has a fence, but that one there, and we proposed the same kind of rod iron as you have your water plant, sure. your cemeteries. Things like that, something right. very attractive, but 
allows some type of protection. We don't want to go eight feet. We're happy with six. Okay. And I appreciate your support. Thank you. Mayor, if I may. Please. Jim, um, is there is there going to be any buffer between the Moat Highlands homes? Um, significant. Um, as Amanda mentioned, there's about a five, six acre track of residential land. We're only putting our stormwater basin on it, and there's substantial amount of land from there down to the creek. Okay. So no vertical development is being proposed on the residential property. Thank you. Other questions from the commission? Any questions from the public? There appear to be none. Is there a motion? So, so moved. moved. Second. So there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So it stands approved. Item number 13. This is the first reading of ordinance number 1081, an annexation located at 303 34th Street, annex 19-1 next to the Bay County Sheriff's Department. There'll be no action necessary this evening as there is a report is from Planning Director Ms. Richard. No report, okay. Um, we'll just read the first reading then, um, 1081. Thank you. Ordinance number 1081, an ordinance annexing into the municipal limits of the city of Lynn Haven, Florida, certain contiguous compact unincorporated land located at 303 34th Street, East and Bay County, Florida, for an approximate point zero point three seven seven acres of property and is particularly described herein pursuant to the Florida statute section one seven one that uh, point zero four four amending the boundaries of the, of the city to include said land repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith and reciting an effective date. Thank you. And I think Ms. Richard wanted to add something to that. I, I just wanted for the public, because I said there doesn't need to be, um, I just wanted to let them know that the reason is that this is the first reading. The second reading at the next commission meeting will be the public hearing. And that's when I'll make a presentation and everybody will have an opportunity to speak. Thank you. Um, any questions from uh, the commission at this point that you'd like to ask? Mayor, if I may? Yes, go ahead. This is an, 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 an annexation, not a de-annexation. Is the sheriff's office currently in the city of Lynn Haven? The, um, the, the sheriff's department that, that's there on 77 currently is, but this parcel is not. Okay, thought, Chief Ramey wants to make a comment. It is. It, it is. <laughs> it was in, I know, but the sheriff's it was in Lynn Haven when I did the sheriff's complex in 06. But it has to be in the biggest county seat. So if it has a 32405, the sheriff's office address does. So you have to put the sheriff's office in the biggest seat in the county. So that actually, believe it or not, is in the jurisdiction of, I mean, we, we respond there and you give them water, but it has a 32405 address. Yeah. Okay, if, if but, we could um, yeah. perhaps research and continue this discussion at a later time, that would be great. <laughs> Please Jim, go ahead. Jim Sloney, I just want to make, this is a continue, contiguous parcel with the existing right. compound uh -huh. and will be inclusive within it. So it's not like a freestanding. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Moving on to item number 14. Um, this is the first reading of ordinance number 1082, a small scale plan amendment 19-3 um, at 303 34th Street East, proposing a change from Bay County Commercial to the city of Lynn Haven Commercial. There'll be no action necessary this evening. We'll go ahead and read ordinance number 1082. Ordinance number 1082, an ordinance providing for the adoption pursuant to Chapter 163, Florida Statutes, of a land use change from Bay County General Commercial to City of Lynn Haven Commercial for an approximate 0 0.377 acres of property located at 303 34th Street East in the City of Lynn Haven, Bay County, Florida, repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith and providing an effective date. Thank you. Are there any questions that anyone on the commission has at this time? Is everyone satisfied to wait until the second reading and the public hearing? Thank you. Item number 15, 
This is the discussion and possible approval of ordinance number 1084 regulating mobile food truck vendors in the city of Lynn Haven. Um, we have the ordinance and then maybe the acting city manager would like to make some comments as well. Sure. Mayor, we, we have seen uh, and have been, have been asked about food trucks coming into the city of Lynn Haven, which right now we do not allow. But one of the things that we would like to do is allow that and put some guidelines to when and where food trucks will be allowed. Uh, one of the things with this ordinance will be uh, that uh, food trucks that come into the city of Lynn Haven will actually have to apply for a permit. Uh, annually, which is $100, uh, and also pay a $50 fee. Uh, we currently do allow some of the fee food trucks when we do some of the special events, but we have no way of regulating them when they're outside of these special events. And so we are asking to put, some, put an ordinance in place, put a permitting fee in place, so that uh, the food trucks and people will see that they have been uh, permitted by the, by the city of Lynn Haven. And Mayor, this is just a first reading as well. Yes. Yes. Did we already read it? <laughs> I didn't think we did. <laughs> ordinance number 1084 in the ordinance of the City Commission of Lynn Haven, Florida, creating a new chapter entitled Mobile Food Trucks Operating Within the City, providing definitions, regulations for food truck for mobile food trucks requiring mobile food trucks vendors permits, establishing regulations and prohibitions, providing for enforcement, appeals and penalties, providing for repealer, codification and severability and providing an effective date. Thank you. Um, is there any, any, and this is a first reading, it doesn't say possible action or, or it just says discussion and possible approval. So that is a misnomer on the agenda. Yes, we okay. only you. have the first reading. We Thank, you. It until the second. Thank you very much. So even though this is a first reading, are there any comments or questions from the commission? regarding the food truck ordinance. Are there any questions from the public regarding this? Okay, moving on to item number 16, discussion and possible approval of resolution 2019-11-306 addressing private party building and permitting vendor fees. Um, can we read the resolution? Yes, ma'am. Resolution number 2019-11-306, a resolution of the city of Lynn Haven, Florida, establishing a fee schedule for permits issued by the building department for using a private provi provider as defined pursuant to chapter 553 for the statutes and providing an effective date. Mayor, this resolution here is to put us in line with the Florida statutes. Florida statute says we can no longer charge private uh, providers the same amount that uh, the city charges. So we're asking that uh, the city be able to uh, give some type of discount to those private providers. And in this resolution, there's a 20% discount with a $75 fee for the building inspector um, putting his stamp of approval and looking over any um, plans that he may have to do. Thank you. Are there uh, questions from the commission regarding this uh, resolution? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, please. Um, can you, uh, the term that you just used, private providers, can you explain to me what that is? Yes, ma'am. Every city has their own provider for a building inspector or building official. We have Mike Gordon and Associates. Uh, some have EPCI. Uh, some developers prefer to go out and get a company who is not attached to any city and do their own um, permitting inspections and plans. And uh, those folks already bring in everything. And uh, normally the city would have to look at those plans and go over them. But uh, basically this time around, we because all the work has been done on the front end by those private providers, we have to give them some type of discount. But we also are we, we're relinquishing any liability once we uh, prov prov uh, once we approve this resolution. Thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Any from the public? Mayor, if I may. Yes. Um, I've had a discussion with the acting <laughs> city manager about this, um, and I guess I need to. Uh, I want. I'd like some clarification as far as licensing is concerned. I know that um, our city planner has a, a planning license uh, issued through the state. Um, I know our building official has a building license uh, issued through the state. 
um, if we go to allow these people to have private um, plan or a, a private party suppliers for their uh, planning and building departments, who issues the license? Will the license still be issued through our building official or is it going to be through their building official? And the reason I'm asking that is because I understand from my license fee, my license, if I get in trouble, I get pulled in front of the state because of my license. I do not want us to to allow them to use their building official and then our building official get drug in front of the state if there's a problem with the building codes of the house being built. So, Mayor, one of the things we have put in place is um, an application. It's two things that the application is filled out by the contractor and it says that we held, that we have a whole a whole harmless um, agreement that they signed and not holding the city uh, liable for anything that happens um, that is filled out by the contractor um, itself. And so even the building we, we did meet with our building uh, official. Uh, to make sure we were uh, doing things correctly. So no liability will be on the city once they fill out that application and that affidavit. That, that's a financial liability, right? I'm referring to a license for liability. Commission, if I may. We don't have a choice. We have to allow them by state statute. Private providers are a being of state statute. With that being said, the state statute sets forth the criteria that uh, you must meet to be a private provider and they are regulated by DPBR among their licensing board as well. So I, I hope that answers your question. Similar to your, your license being regulated by your board or potentially DPBR, depending on the scenario, similar to that private provider, but he must meet those criteria set forth in state statute. Um, I do not believe there's a way that the city can prevent a private provider uh, the statute simply says that we've got to allow them and that uh, we must reduce our fees based off of le uh, the amount of cost that it saves us. So, so Mayor, if I may. Go ahead. They dictate the percentage we have to give them or, or, or we can dictate that percentage? They, they do not get to dictate, but we, we have to have some sort of reasonable basis for the number that we, um, co we, that we come to. And that's what, in our, my discussions with, um, Mr. Gordon and Ms. Gaynor is that we have to have a reasonable nexus between the reduction in fees and what we're requesting from the pri private provider because if the private provider were to ever sue us, we'd have to have somebody raise their right hand and testify as to the uh, reduction in workload. Mayor, if I may continue. Sure, go ahead. Um, at the end of the day, um, Mike Gordon's name is going to be the building official that issues the permit, correct? He may, he will have some um, participation in this, but the ultimate sign or uh, that the building meets all code would be the private provider. Okay, all right, yeah. thank you. Now, um, can I just say something? Um, with these, um, these will not be being reviewed by Mike Gordon at all. These will be handled like um, over the counter permits which is something that the staff have, have found very difficult to swallow, to be honest, because we're basically going to have to take their word for it if we don't do a review of it, which we're not supposed to because they're saying it's already been done, that their setbacks are correct, that the number of fixtures they're telling us are going to be in there are actually the true number that are in there. Um, but Mike Gordon will not be doing a review. He won't be looking at the plans at all so he won't be involved and he won't be carrying out inspections unless he's one of the i think there's something like three um, percent um yes of buildings have to be randomly inspected so unless you know one of those turns out to be the one one of the ones um but other than that the city basically isn't reviewing anything isn't inspecting anything wow. right and i was also informed that this was put in place as an emergency measure some time ago, but it has not been rescinded. And so it's still on the books as a statute and we can't argue with it. Mayor, Mayor if I may. Uh, go ahead, please. Um, I, I, I would really like for the staff to make sure that we make sure that the discount that we're giving them is the absolute minimum possible discount. And Mayor, Mayor. Yes, please. And, and that is um, very a very true statement. We have a look at other cities. We did research uh, with Bay County. We researched Panama City Beach, and uh, this is 
definitely the minimum, and we'll let you know that. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions or discussion? And we can go forward with with either with an approval this evening, correct? On this one, it's yes, not sir. okay. Um, is there a motion for approval? So I mean, moved. I, thank you. I was gonna I was gonna say even though it's distasteful, it's as as the attorney has pointed out now several times, it's Florida statute. Right. Everyone, we have no choice. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any from the public? Ms. Kanner, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Tender? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Commissioner Russell? No. Commissioner Parno? No. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So the, it is uh, approved um, three to two. And I would, I would also say that um, the three who voted voted in line with Florida statute. <laughs> Thank you very much. Item number 17, discussion and possible approval of resolution 2019-11-307. This is the fiscal year 2018-2019 final budget amendment. Uh, Ms. Gaynor, do you have a report? Yes, ma'am. Mayor, uh, this is also required that we come in and we true up all of our numbers from last year. This is last year's budget, 18-19. And um, this is this to show where we were over or under budget in some areas. And then this resolution is actually sent to the state. Uh, so this is one of these um, uh, resolutions that we have to pass and have it in our um, documents. So moved. Second. Um, so there has been a motion and a second. Um, do we do need to read the resolution, correct? Yes, Ms. Gaynor, would you please read the resolution? Thank you. Resolution number 2019-11-307, a resolution of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, amending the adopted general fund, enterprise fund budgets, and that disaster recovery budget for fiscal year 2018-2019. So there's been a motion and a second. We've read the resolution. Are there any questions or concerns from the commission? Any from the public? Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Parno? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Stands approved. Item number 18, discussion and possible approval of the residential incentive program application for 600 East 16th Street. Uh, Mr. Janky, do you have the report on that? Uh, this application was received by city staff actually last year in September. Um, the, obviously, the project uh, had a little delay, um, but it was um, completed in, um, in June of 2019, and um, the applicant is requesting approval of this application as presented. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions from the commission for Mr. Jackie? There appear to be none. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions from the public? Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldrich? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Stands approved. Item number 20, um, excuse me, item number 19. Discussion and possible approval of the residential incentive program application for 602 East 16th Street. The same report, basically the different address. Correct. It's just the building right next door. Okay, just for the public's information, the amount of the application is? $2,500. For each one, right? For each one. Thank you very much. Is there any further discussion from the commission? Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion from the public? Ms. Gaynor, please call the roll. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Um, item number 21, um, discussion and possible approval of ordinance number 1085, amending chapter 54. Did I skip one? Sorry. Discussion and possible approval of an access easement in the city of Lynn Haven. This is the city attorney, uh, Mr. Albright. And I'm sorry, item number 20. Thank you, Mayor. This pertains to a portion of Colorado Avenue. Uh, I would like to point out that there is uh, an access easement for this road for all but the triangle piece if you look at it on your agenda which is labeled access easement there's already an, uh, an access easement for everything but that triangle piece this essentially is to clean that up um, the, the access easement for the other portion of the roads were adopted uh, under previous administration so it's fairly old uh, in this particular case 
the road is um, based off the information I've been provided. The road has been maintained by um, the city of Lynn Haven for more than four years, which is required statutorily for it to be dedicated. And this is simply perfunctory uh, to provide prima facie evidence of our ability to come in and maintain that road. Thank you. Um, any questions for uh, Mr. Albritton? Yes. Go ahead, please. It was my understanding that that triangle belonged to, uh, belonged to the lady who lives on the corner. And that when her husband passed, or before he passed, he um, said that they came to him from the country club, said we want to clean it up and such, and uh, he gave his permission. So I, I guess I'm in question for how we can just take that. I, I don't believe we're taking anything. Um, okay. This is not it, number one pursuant to Florida statute of a road that's maintained by a municipality from four continuous years is presumed to be dedicated to the municipality. Um, so, my understanding of what I've been told, and I had I have not not participated in any maintenance of Colorado Avenue, so I'm taking it for what I'm being told mm -hmm. is that we've maintained this road for more than four years, and it is not a taking that we're taking away this road. It is a public access road. All we're doing is saying that we can, we are now documenting in the public records that we have a right for the maintenance side of the road, uh, whether it's the road needs to be resurfaced or there's some other similar issues. Uh, I know I, in gathering evidence along with Ms. Gaynor, I spoke to Mr. Forehand, who's in the public in the crowd today. So if Mr. Forehand would like mm -hmm. to address what's actually been done there. But legally speaking, my understanding is that this road has been maintained by the city of Lynn Haven for more than four continuous years and pursuant to Florida statute 95.361, this would allow us to claim this uh, access easement. Wow. Does you want more information from Mr. Forehand or? Uh, sure. <laughs> Is it any different than what he just said? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give Chris Forehand, I'm with Panhandle Engineering. Um, I'll give you a little bit of additional information you know, we're getting ready to pay Colorado. Yes. It's on the list. Uh, getting ready to put a, a water line down Colorado. The water line is actually on the other side of the road, so it wouldn't affect this triangle. But in preparation of the paving, we wanted to make sure that we had adequate right of way. And we know there's been some issues with that area in the past. So in checking that, we figured out that this triangle was left out. So we thought it'd be a good idea before we go in there and make improvements that we make sure that this right of way is documented or or easement per se. And did we have to did we have to address the owner? I mean, did we have to do anything there or is it simply if it does belong to them, they lost it because we've been maintaining it for four years? The statute says it's presumed to be dedicated if you meet the criteria, which is at least four continuous years of maintenance. Okay. So I would follow up on what Commissioner Tender is asking. Is there any is there a dispute about the property? I mean, has, has someone come to the city disputing ownership of the property or I'm, I'm just asking? Uh, no. And I'm just asking on their behalf, do they even know that we're doing this? Mayor, we will have some conversation with the, these owners to know they do know that that, that part of uh, Colorado does is uh, in the easement and that we are going to go and do some main we're going to do some paving and some other things there so we are going to to meet with them but we did not want to meet with them until after we found out whether or not um, go on and have this approved by the Commission so I understand everything about the easement and our maintenance and all that but what I'm hearing tonight is new information to me that there may be a property owner in question and mm -hmm. and so um, if if this is not if this is not like an emergency situation for the paving or whatever, um, would it would it hurt anything to let it lie there for a week or two while we have the discussion with this property owner about what we're talking about tonight? And 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 I, I mean I'd just like to be on air on the side of caution. I've had this conversation with this lady and it was just an innocent conversation. She okay. told me this wonderful story about blah blah blah. And what you're saying to me sounds like the exact same spot. Hmm. And she still lives on that corner. Is, is this near the where they want to put a roundabout at the entrance of the country club? Mm -hmm. no, right sir. there? No, sir. It's not. No. No, it's yeah, that it's curve just as it comes in the right. country club right. drive right. where oh, the right cart there. barns used to be. Yeah, where the cart barns the used to be. Right there. In fact, I don't know if you've been there lately, Over. but they have a the right. white fence that's kind of close to the close to the road there. That's that property. On the back side? Yes, it would be on the west side of Colorado. Okay. Um, well, I, I can't make the motion, but I'm just right. my my opinion is that Commissioner Tinder has brought up something that I think it would behoove the commission to get more information before we move forward on this. 
Mayor, if I may. Yes, go ahead, please. I propose that I, I'd like to make a motion that, that we postpone um, this item until the next commission meeting to give time for the property owners to be notified. I'll second that. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Um, any from the public? And Ms. Gaynor? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Aldrich? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Um, so we'll I'll just sort of table this until the next the next okay. meeting. Thank sure. you very much. Mm -hmm. um, item number 21 um, is, is something that um, has sort of been ongoing that um, I brought to our attorney and to our acting city manager. Um, discussion and possible approval of ordinance number 1085 amending chapter 54 of the city's code of ordinances making provisions for disposal shoots at construction sites. Um, the reason for this is our, our ordinance did not contain it is in Florida statutes. And um, I had a personal experience. I'm temporarily living in the uh, condominium across the bridge. It's eight stories tall. And I was walking the dog very shortly um, uh, beside the building. There were no warning signs, no danger signs, no cordons, nothing to warn anybody not to be walking there. And a piece of cast iron, a lightning rod with a pointed end weighing approximately 12 pounds fell from eight stories above my head and planted in the ground about six feet from the dog and I. So since I did not die, um, I brought, and I was being humorous, but it really was very frightening, and then began to look, and all around the building where this new roof was being put on, there were full bottles of uh, uh, sports drinks. Um, any, I mean, this full of water falling off an eight-foot building can injure you. Um, pieces of metal. So anyway, I brought this forward, and, and in light of the fact we're probably going to be building buildings here in the center of town and, and contracting with people that we would have a safe disposal method so they're not just tossing things off the top of of a roof more than two stories high to hit the people below. So that's the story behind it. Um, and it is in compliance with Florida statute. If you want to comment on that. Mayor, it's essentially um, taking the language um, provided by OSHA that OSHA dictates for employers uh, in this particular situation and being placed into our code of ordinances for enforceability from my local level. Thank you. Any um, discussion from the commissioner questions? Any from the public? I would I would hope that we could move forward on it. I would make a motion. Seems in the sense of safety, that just is good common sense. Second. So there's a motion and a second. Um, could we read the ordinance um, 1085 at this time before we move forward? Oh, it is a first reading. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, well, we don't need a motion. I'm, well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking at possible approval, so I, pos yeah. I apologize. It's, um, so if we'll just strike through possible approval, I apologize. Let's go ahead and read the ordinance 1085. An ordinance of the city of, of the city commission of Lynn Haven, Florida, amending chapter 54, article two of Lynn Haven code of ordinances related to building construction wastes, providing for requirements of safety and cleanliness of construction sites, providing severability and an effective date. Thank you. So that was a first reading, so we wouldn't require any action this evening. So we'll move on to our last item. And if we're going to have 49 items on the December meeting, we might want to consider having two. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Item number 22, <laughs> discussion and possible approval to advertise an RFP for cemetery and lawn care services for city properties. Ms. Gaynor. Mayor, we're in a kind of a dormant season right now, and we've gone through a pretty, pretty rough season in terms of the, terms of the city of Lynn Haven. We have a lot of properties that we've required, uh, some properties that still need to be attended to. And uh, really meeting with the staff, we wanted to go back and look at our uh, agreement and for the cemetery and lawn care and really see how we possibly could save some money. We now have kind of a full staff in place, uh, really sit down and say what's, what properties we really want to do ourselves and what properties we want to be do out for bid. And um, this particular RFP probably will take us about a month to write, and so it won't probably go out until the first of the year. So we want to make sure we we can get started on it and put it out and 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 really um, kind of see what's out there so that we can uh, potentially have uh, you know maybe one or two vendors in place. And this will come back before the commission before uh, we send it out again. Thank you. Is there discussion from the commission? Mayor, if I may, please go ahead. Um, if we agree to put this out for an RFP, what, what happens to the current contract we have with Greenlee? That contract will be voided, and the contract says we, we have to give him at least a 30-day notice 
And so uh, that's one of the reasons we'll probably give us a, about a month to write it. And then once the, once the bid goes out, we will give the cur current uh, vendor a 30 day notice. And, and Mary, if I may continue. Go ahead, please. And you're doing this on an RFP, not an RFQ, correct? Yes, yes, sir. We did it on RFP last time. Okay. Because and, it'll and, be pricing and, involved. And Greenleaf will be able, will have no problem in, in rebidding. They, they will, anyone that when we put out a bid, any any firm can bid on um, an RFP if they're qualified to do so or have the resources to do do so. Even if they don't, we can't. Uh, we have to receive all bids, and then it's always in our bid that the city has the right to reject any bids, but normally we do not. Mary, one last question. Go ahead, please. Uh, and the, 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 the quantity of work that this RFP is going to have compared to what we currently have under contract is significantly different, or is it the same, basically the same same work? I think one of the things that we are looking at doing is some of it will be differently, but I, one of the problems is, is that you have it separated in two categories and we want really a total price of that uh, uh, contract when we get this back so that you will be able and I will be able to see how to budget for the rest of the year for that year. Right now it's pretty hard because you do have those added alternates on one side and some of those were added, some of those were taken away. You will have one amount that you will be able to approve and move from there. Thank you, Mayor. Are there other questions from the commission? Um, Mayor, if you may. Go ahead, please, Mr. Perno. Um, um, at, the, at a previous point, uh, um, Mr. Anderson, who has the contract with the city, he asked to speak to the commissioners and I, I believe I was the only commissioner to meet with him, and he explained at that time how how he bid this contract and and how it was a, it was a set up as a as a base contract with with additional add-ons, and he was awarded add-ons uh, uh, due to post storm situations and whatnot by our previous city manager, and it became a it became to where he had all the add-ons. And uh, and and therefore it drove up his pricing and so forth. Um, um, but he he, he um, reiterated to me that he's he's bid a very fair and low contract, and he's um, and his contract actually he in his opinion was underbid for certain areas. And if it had to go out to bid again, um, and 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 if he was to bid and other companies would bid. We're, we're we have a base contract with this man and we're, we're going to go ahead and bid it and people are going to come back and bid it we're going to we're going to get bid for more we're going to be on the hook for more and we have this man through 2021 and i i, I think he does a great job because i can drive by and see the parks and see the stuff that he's done and see the stuff that the city maintains and there is a huge difference in the quality of work that when 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 you see this um, he, and he's also volunteered to help with the Memorial Garden to maintain it um, in our in our parks, um, and he does the irrigation uh, a part of things without charging the city. He goes above and beyond, uh, I believe, and he's expressed to me that he does this for um, a passion for the city that he's lived in his whole life. Um, he's a Lynn Haven resident and 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 a good man, as far as I'm concerned. Is when I looked across the table at him, I saw in his eyes the passion for the work that he does and the care for our city. So I don't know why we would bid uh, again to come in at higher pricing for someone we have locked in for the next two years. And uh, whether whether we want to bid the add-on separately or not, that's that 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 that's relevant to who we want to bid that to. But we have the man locked up at a base contract at a fair price until the end of his contract. So. I, I, that's all I wanted to say, and um, I know that he's here, and I know there's going to be public commentary, so i just like to mention that, and that's how I feel about it, so. Thank you, Commissioner Perno. Is there any further discussion on the commission? Y yes, Mayor. Go ahead, please, Commissioner I, Aldridge. I, I have a couple of questions. Um, first off, was the original contract, it was signed before the hurricane, is that correct? That's correct. correct. What's the total dollar amount on that contract, do we know? Yeah. It, the total amount was, I think, one twenty 
six, one hundred twenty-six thousand somewhere along. So we were one hundred twenty-six thousand on the contract. That was that was just for um, the long care service. The ones that we had specified so in that. When in we the, throw in the additions, what what did our total come up to? Well, it went up to almost four hundred fifty-nine thousand dollars, and and um, after the storm, we cut several pro properties from that, and it took it down to two hundred and ninety-four thousand dollars. So our, our bottom line, we net two ninety four, what yes, we spent. Sir. Yes, sir. And that's with any additional things that we ask um, the current vendor to do. Um, there is some additional charge to those. So and that's just a net of the properties we have in place. But any additional work um, will come with that as well. It'll it'll be charged to us. And how many months has this contract been under? It's since um, two thousand seventeen. Five year contract. Oh. How many months? It is a um, three-year contract, a four-year contract so with the right months. to renew um, for another 48 four months. We're about 24 months in, right? So if we do our math on this, we're looking at about 11 to 12 grand a month. It, it normally runs about 18,000, 18, 18 to 20,000 a month. Yes, sir. Do we feel like that's high? Uh, yes, sir. I do feel like that's a little bit high. Okay, because I, you know, just from my standpoint, what I'm looking at here is, I mean, I like Mr. Anderson as well. This, this isn't about liking, this is about money and can we do something more efficiently or can we not? Where I'm sitting at, you know, it's a lot of dollars. It's a lot of dollars. And, and I, you know, I can't say that I am adamantly opposed anytime someone says, hey, look, there's a different set of circumstances here versus pre-storm. There's a lot more dollars being spent on things, and we may want to circle the wagons back up and look at this. That's capitalism. Um, you know, I, I do it every day. I bid jobs every single day and try to win contracts with big companies. So I understand how that game works. Um, but again, my opinion, I know Commissioner Pro gave his. It's not a like, not like thing. It's not a personal thing at all. I'm looking at dollars. I'm looking at numbers. Can we save money? I don't know. So I want to put that out there, though. Thank you, Commissioner Aldridge. And Anyone I, else on the? If I may, yes, uh, go ahead, Commissioner we, Perno. We, my opinion, my opinion is that we won't save money. We put this out for bid again. It's going to come in higher because of the cost of doing business. The other companies are going to bid at a higher, a higher amount. Even even the person we have a contract with, on the base contract, he's going to come back and bid higher. So we're going to end up looking at bids to pay more money than we have locked in right now. Mayor, if I may. Yes, go ahead, please, Commissioner Tinder. I, I, I tend to agree with uh, Commissioner Aldridge because of one thing. It doesn't hurt the shop as long as you know why. That's the only time you get in trouble. If you put a RFP out there to see if anybody is cheaper, we're not going to accept somebody who's more expensive. We're not going to we're not going to avoid the contract when we put out the RFP. We avoid the contract. But he could resubmit the balance of the contract. He's already said he's going to come in higher because everybody's going to come in higher. It's then the I, cost of doing business today versus when he locked in at the contract. So he actually told you that he's going to come in higher if he rebids? If the cost of doing business is more than it, than it was when he bid the contract. Well, then I think that we should give our lawn mowing back to uh, Mr. Horton, buy a few riders, and we could hire – Quite a few people. And you'll see the difference between mowers on the ground mm -hmm. and a company that comes in and manicures your parks and whatnot. And right. is that what we want to put out there? Because there's a total difference mm -hmm. between the quality of work that's done in our parks versus the mowing that's done by our city. The only thing I would like to um, say, because I'm not arguing with you, Commissioner Perno, at all, um, Mr. Anderson did ask everybody if they wanted to talk to him one-on-one -on -one and i was the only one who did right i chose not to because i felt in the midst of an fbi investigation that he's involved with it would i didn't be know about him being involved in an fbi him. industry because i don't work for the fbi i okay. i just know that a guy has to talk well, with me published. who's a lynn haven citizen yeah. okay yeah. If, if we could we could have order i think what i think what um miss tender uh, commissioner tender excuse me is referring to is it's been highly publicized in local news media as well as we have been requested as the city to supply documentation from various companies the city did business with when Mr. White was a city manager and 
and um, Greenleaf was one of those that was requested. I get it. So that so so Commissioner T so Commissioner Tender was not insinuating anything, in my opinion, other than just stating a fact that 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 has been uh, publicized. It certainly doesn't mean that anyone's guilty or innocent, because believe you me, I've had a, I've had several I, I, things I thrown my way that. too. I know you all have, and I wouldn't bring that up other other than the fact that. Hey, a fellow wanted to talk to us about mm -hmm. this stuff, and I just wanted to do that. And and I think that what Commissioner Tender is saying that to meet one on one with a vendor that at this point in time there has been some question about, she didn't feel comfortable doing that. Sure. Was, and so the, I think that's what she was saying. If I may put words in your Absolutely. mouth, because that's, that's exactly the reason I didn't respond as well. So, is there any other discussion? Well, I've just about said everything I said from meeting him. So. You know, I put and, it out there too. I hope the FBI heard it too. And and, and I'll not comment on that for sure. Here we go. What, um, it's been a heck? it's been an interesting interesting discussion. Um, Mayor, the whole goal of this is to try save to save money. <laughs> save yes. money. Get yes. back to the point. Yes, the whole goal of this is to save money. Now that we have a full staff in place, we can sit down and see what our staff can do, and then what this other vendor, whether it be Mr. Anderson. Again, we all love Mr. Anderson. We know he loves the city, and he has done a great job. But we want to make sure that we are getting the best bang for our buck. He has expressed to me that yes, he did maybe underbid on some of those projects. And particularly the the cemetery, there's a there's a big job there all by itself, and so we are going to restructure uh, the RFP so that it is fair to everyone. And before we put this RFP out, I would like for every commissioner to look at it and see um, that we what we put together and what we propose before it goes out. If if I may again, we're voiding a man's contract to do this. We don't have to do that. We, we don't have to avoid his contract. And you tell me if, if I'm correct, but do we have to avoid his contract when we put out another contract? Well, put I, out enough RP. I think it makes it very complicated to put this out to bid and then look at the bid prices and then come back and say, no, we like the original contract prices. I think that creates a lot of issues for bid challenges. Uh, should we see the bid prices from a number of vendors and look at Mr. Uh, Anderson's contract afterwards and say, we want to stick with that. I think I, th I think the city's best bet is to uh, the either or option, either stick with Mr. Anderson or uh, goes proposed by city manager. Okay. And, and if, and if I, I've, I haven't really said anything about my opinion about this, um, and again, I think that uh, Greenleaf and, and Mr. Anderson have, have done um, a, a beautiful job in making the parks and the cemeteries look mm -hmm. the way they do. But at the same point, um, the citizens have the power to pull in at any time a public records request and have done so. And in looking at what we've spent on lawn care and parks, whether they're beautiful or not, um, we're right at over the past months, a million dollars. That's what's being looked at. That's why they're being looked at. And, you know, I like the way the parks look, but I'm not sure that right at a million dollars for lawn care is where a city this size needs to be. So I hope that that doesn't offend anyone, but that's the figures. It's close to a million dollars. And in this time, I think that's a little bit high for manicuring our hedges. So that's where I'm at. Mayor, Mayor if I may, I've, I've said I've been quiet and, and obviously I didn't want to wave into the fray, but um, to defend you and Ms. Um, Tender, Oh, I can defend myself. No, I know. So you just take I, I care know. of you. I, know. <laughs> I don't um, need to be defended. Thank I, you very I, much. I, I too did not meet with uh, with Mr. Anderson. And just to uh, let the other commissioners know, I reached out to our city attorney and I did not meet with Mr. Anderson based on his recommendation. So that was the, the understanding. It was it was just not a, not a smart move for the, a commissioner to meet with him. So um, that being said, to avoid a gentleman's contract, uh, has been given in good faith I, I i have issue with um if we void contracts and it's going to make future vendors think twice about wanting to do business with city limited you know if we're going to void contracts every time we think that we can save a little money or we can get a better job at what point do they say well i don't want to do business with Haven because i can't be guaranteed i'm going to have that job yeah so um 
from that aspect, I have issues with this. So, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And if, and if I may come back and add to that, I'm not sure that having a five-year contract for lawn service was a, a, a great decision on the part of the former city manager. So I don't have a lot of guilt about thinking about doing a contract differently, even if we stay with the same person, maybe just renegotiating that contract for a shorter period of time to see how the pricing goes this time. But um, the former city manager to negotiate a five-year contract, um, I don't know that he did himself or the vendor any good because the vendor's saying he underbid. So um, I, I don't feel any guilt at looking at possibly changing that contract. And then if this vendor chooses to come back and bid again, that's certainly this vendor's decision. That's my thought. Yes, ma'am. If, if I may. Sure. Um, while the city manager may have negotiated the contract, this commission approved it. So I, I always feel like the buck stops at this table. The, and if so, I may come back with that, while the commission approved a certain contract, this commission did not approve the amount that was ultimately spent. Because of that, I would agree with that, yes, ma'am. Um, there we have it, it. I have a question as well. I know, I know that uh, that's what we said was called add-ons, but he, he was given all the add-ons by the previous city manager, and we, we you know, he did the work, he put in the bill. I'm, I'm going to stop my comments at that point. I'm just going to reiterate that nearly a million dollars sounds like a lot of money to me for the time period for that work. And I'm, I, I agree with the acting city manager that it would be prudent for us to at least entertain the possibility of a different company. If the same company wants to bid. I would say one last thing. I'm sorry, Mary. No, if I may. That's why we're um, here. We certainly can't know, talk anywhere else. I know that, and I, and I didn't want to interrupt. And Mr. Anderson, I, I hope I hope we're not making you uncomfortable with our discussion. It's just the only place. It's the only place we can talk, and I I, I appreciate wanna, you being here. I, well, I, I felt I thought I might be interrupting, so I, I wanted no, to be respectful. I'm sorry. Is that I would I would entertain all the shopping in the world if we didn't void the man's contract until we did. I mean, I think that's fair to him. And I and think it, the attorney has just told us that that's not a prudent move. But it could be. It could be done. Can I, can I ask a question as well? Have we looked at uh, Miss Gaynor the amount of properties that are out there that we think that the city could maintain without straining our resources versus the ones that truly need lawn care? Have we have we delineated those properties out? That is the reason why we're having this conversation is because we have sat down with um, the community services director and there are some properties now that we have a full staff that we can probably maintain ourselves. Uh, we probably could take away from um, Mr. Anderson and I think that, that that may happen. But if we want to streamline it, line it and take away some of those properties that the city can now do themselves but the city just bought two other properties uh within the past year that we've added to that along with all of the the right-of-ways and the easements and the streets that we do so uh it's a lot of work yeah so yes we can sit down and do that if you like for me to bring it back to the commission yeah i think what i want to do I, i'd like to to make a motion that we table this it's winter time it's about to be 28 degrees outside there's not going to be anything growing so let's table it let's find out exactly what we feel like we can handle as a city versus what we feel like we really need professional lawn care on because i would think some things that are happening in the future we will need professional lawn care it can't just be um our, our city crew out there doing all that um, but I also want to make sure we're making the right decision. I, I, you know, I'm having a heartburn here with that. First off, I've never heard of a five in my business. Okay. A five-year contract. That's, that's a long contract. Um, but that, that, that being said, I also don't want to nullify a contract that has been signed because again, y'all know me, I stick by what I say or what we've done. So I'm for saving money. I'm for doing the right thing. Doing the right thing is the main thing in that sentence. Can we, I would like to make a motion to table this until the, the December meeting where we could get some more facts together and then we can say, okay, look, here's what we're looking at. Here's the entire battlefield. Now we can make a decision. Second. So there's been a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion from the commission? Is there any discussion from the public? Uh, you've been the topic. You certainly have the right to talk. Absolutely. I had a big old spill I was going to talk about, but 
thing with the million dollars is not just lawn maintenance. It, I've been the lowest bidder on just about any project that has came along to the city. And so all of that is totaled into that amount. So it's not just lawn care, you know, um, and I am locked in at a lower price than mm -hmm. I'm going to be if you rebid. Sure. sure. Um, so it's, and it's because of mm -hmm. error on my part, didn't there, you know, I've I done under the head properties, I know. And, but I've stuck yeah. by right. what I said I was going to do. Right. And I take care of them and, you know, I don't complain. I do it all, volunteer all the time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure that I was clear. The million dollars is not, just lawn care sure. it's projects it's installs it's everything like that sure everything that i have won that's been paid to me has been in the, the mounts up to the million dollars. right all right and i'm not here to question no, no, i'm no. not here to question that i'm really not and i and i i know that you know every one of us up here you know most people in this room okay so you know none of us are throwing a rock at you yeah no um, i don't feel it, it comes that, down to dollars and cents at the end of the day yeah and like she was saying the twenty thousand dollars that's Eighteen thousand is the maintenance, right? Right. You know, two thousand is as a, a project that I did, and you know, I'll be doing another one for Greg. And so, it's just that's where I just come in as the, under, the lowest bidder on these things because I don't. I am a for-profit business, but I don't profit off the city. Right. You guys are. It's a sense of pride here, and also that uh, you know I get a lot of work from you guys. Mm -hmm. And another thing is, if you would have met with me, I would have never discussed anything about an investigation. I strictly wanted to talk about the contract. Yeah, I didn't, that was it. We didn't talk about any investigation. That was it. Strictly talk about the contract. All right. I've got a wonderful Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Is there any further discussion from the public? There's been a motion and a second that this item be um, tabled until the December uh, meeting. And Ms. Gaynor, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Aldridge? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Tinder? Yes. Commissioner Perno? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And uh, so that we'll table that until December, and then we'll have just one meeting the month of December. And item number 23, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for attending. Have a lovely Thanksgiving. It's December 23rd.